99.5 The X. It just rocks. Hanging out backstage with the one and only Dave Mustaine. Very, very nice to meet you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, uh, I just want to say, 15 <laughs> studio albums, that is a hell of an accomplishment. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It is. It's hard to remember all the songs, too. <laughs> a lot of lyrics. Now, uh, over the years, you know, obviously you've, you've seen so many things come and go and so many changes in music. What, what is what, a new thing, you know, new sound? Is there anything like that right now that's really catching your ear? A new sound? Or maybe a new band? or There's a lot of really great new bands. I think it's funny, back when I started, there were so many great riffs. Now they're all taken. And <laughs> so it's really hard to come up with something original that's exciting. But there's a lot of really great bands that, that uh, are playing right now. Um, I know that uh, David and Kiko are big fans of Ghost and stuff like that. I haven't heard them, so I don't know anything about them. But we're going to check them out today. Yeah, I'm like. pretty excited to check yeah. them out myself. Yeah, yeah. So... And, I, and you know, it's, I, I, we're having fun too with the new album, the new new lineup. I think it's great to be able to go out and play with Kiko and Chris. You know, high energy, real fun. Very cool. Now, 15 albums in, you know, you mentioned it's it it you, everybody's done it before. How do you, how do you keep coming up with new material, the new lyrics, new riffs? How do you, where does it come from? I mean, you just you would think at some point it would be like I got nothing left, but you keep coming up with more. <laughs> yeah. I, there's, there's moments where I feel like that. There, I had writer's block during this record, actually, for a couple of days, and, and I think it's kind of natural. If you're really critical of your art and you want to make sure you don't copy yourself, you're going to want to listen to what you were doing and compare it you know, to your catalog. And if you've got a really big catalog, it's hard to right. listen to that. I, mean, I sometimes wonder if some of the bands I grew up listening to that I loved, if, if they you know, ever went, wow, does this sound like... Right. You know, because there's so many bands I really love, and, and a lot of their songs sound the same. Like, for example, Custard Pie and, and The Rover sound a lot alike to me from a guitar player's playing kind of thing. Right. I just wonder, you know. So, <laughs> interesting. Very cool. Um, well, you know, you mentioned some of the bands that you grew up with. Have you, you know, being such an influential name and such an influential band in the, in the rock world, have you over the years heard bands that you were like, they grew up listening to Megadeth. I know it. Nah, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, have you, have you possibly heard your, you know, your sound's influence in in some of the other bands that are out there today? Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Yeah. Bieber is a Megadeth fan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, nothing comes to mind right now. I'm sure there are, but I, I you know, nothing now, uh, comes to mind. Something I actually I was requested to ask by my girlfriend, and I'm glad you brought up the uh, the influences. Uh, a show she is a huge fan of, and I hear you are as well. Outlander. One of your songs, based on not the show, but the actor in the show, do you find yourself finding, you know, influence in things like that, you know, family experiences, shows? I mean, does it come from places you never expected sometimes? Well, it wasn't based on the dude. It was based on the episode. Oh, okay. So there was an episode at the very end where the antagonist in the show had said something to the main character, and um, he was terrorizing the dude and basically said, you know, do I haunt you? Do I, do I, you know, do I f with you when you know? Yeah. I leave and you're still in the cell here. Do I just torment your mind? And I think a lot of the psychology with uh, tormenting people, you can do it without having to lay your hands on them at all. You yeah. know. Um, and the song itself isn't so much about what even happened in the show. It's about people who visit you in your mind. You know. I've had a lot of times. I've had really great dreams and learned a lot from talking out what happened in the dream and other times saved myself a lot of bad stuff that's happened sometimes people call them visions and stuff like that right. or you know sometimes you have premonitions and you'll just see something you go like you know what I, I, I got a bad feeling with that kind of stuff I had this feeling when I was watching that it just brought up a bunch of stuff you yeah. know like people who in, in the back of my mind whenever I want to do something there's always that voice that says eh, eh, or you know what you're not good enough or or you know what all the things that parents say to their kids like yeah. stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about and it's like what yeah <laughs> you know so there's a lot of things that haunt me in, in my own psyche because right. you know your mind's like a hard drive and you figure as many years as I've been alive all the stuff I've heard and processed totally a lot of visions now, uh, speaking of your, you know, the things that you feel like try to try to hold you back, do you do you see those as obstacles or do you see them as as inspiration? I think it's kind of in a weird way an introduction for me to share my story with other people. Every time I've had something that's really weird that has been bad for me that I've overcome it, it was something where I could talk to somebody else 
who could be going through that same thing and need somebody to just say, hey, it's going to be okay, you know? And there's been a lot of times for me when I've been able to speak into people's lives and say stuff, and I can't figure it out. I don't know what the hell matters. But for some reason, me saying something to them, I can say the same thing that their parents say, and, and they listen more, or it has a, a much deeper effect. And, yeah. and for me to go out of my way to just let people know that they matter, you know. I'm not that big that, you know, I can't stop and say, you know what, take the time to love yourself today, you know. And I think that blows a lot of people's minds, especially in, in our business, because pop stars and rock stars act like that. Metal people don't. Metal people are really loving and considerate. Now, this is totally ruining my bad <laughs> reputation right now. So. <laughs> well, I think that's one of the beautiful things about, I mean, music in general, but really specifically in the metal world, there's that connection between the artist and the fans. And it, you know, like you said, you yeah, your experiences connected. translate to them, theirs translate to you. And it, it becomes more than just you know, a performance or a celebrity yeah. or a star, and it becomes almost a family. Yeah, it's definitely not an us versus them thing. I think the commonality that we all go through it, you know, as people forget, just because I'm successful now, I lived in a car when I met David Ellison, and, yeah. you know, I was on food stamps when I was a kid. So I've been through all this stuff, and when I see people go through hardship, and they think, like, you know what, you'll never know what I've been through. Uh, yeah, I do. And, you know, yeah. I mean, I've had it to the point where I remember, I've talked to some of my friends who where we lived we had to have powdered milk which is freaking awful wow. <laughs> <laughs> so so you know for me to be successful now i really appreciate it and i don't want to ever take that for granted and that's why i want to go out of my way to help younger bands and be available for our fans because you know they made it possible for us to live like this right now yeah you know? well I, I think that's absolutely awesome yeah. and you know i like and like i said I, I think this far into a career that's been as successful as yours i think it's amazing that you can still relate back to yeah you know, fans of all walks, you know, yeah. from, from uh, you know, whatever walks of life they've yeah. been through, whatever trials and tribulations. And mm -hmm. like I said, I think that's the amazing thing about music, that it really does. It brings that, it brings people brings together. Us together. It, yeah. yeah, we're like people who wouldn't uh, generally mix, like the dudes that survive a shipwreck. I guess they say, you know, we, we, we don't really know what holds us together, but we all have this common thing, this love for this energy that comes off this music, you know. Absolutely. And some people wreck it by, you know, coming here that aren't metal fans. Yeah. You know, these sage and provocateurs and stuff like that. But, yeah. I mean, for the most part, there's always going to be a good time to be had someplace with metal music. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I think it's, honestly, I think it's easy as, if you really pay attention to it to see the ones who are doing it to put on the show, to you know, to put on the face, mm. and the ones like yourself who are genuinely of the life, who live it, who love it. Having fun. Who have spent their life doing it. Having fun. Dave, you know, I really appreciate your time, and uh, like I said, congratulations on 15 kick-ass albums, nice. and I, I call it a vision if you will, but I see nothing but great things in the future <laughs> for Megadeth. Good, good. Past, good. present, and future. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much. You got to enjoy the rest of the day.